Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, many of you know that uh, every year come October I go to Michigan for about seven to ten days to spend time with my parents and my siblings. And the planning for this year's trip has already begun with emails going back and forth and phone calls and talking about what we're going to do this year as the anticipation builds for this trip. And if it's anything like previous years, uh, the closer we get, the more the excitement builds to the point of even doing countdowns as how many days are left before we get together. Maybe you've done that before a trip you've been planning or something you're looking forward to or meeting up with family you haven't seen for a while and you just get so excited and you're longing for that event to take place. As we begin this new sermon series, that's what we hear in the opening words of the Apostle Paul's letter to the Romans. His longing and his desire to be with the Roman Christians, the Christians in Rome. He, his desire to, to be there with them and to have the opportunity to share the gospel with them. And that's what this letter is about, the letter to the Romans. It's in preparation for his plan to go to Rome to see the Christians. He briefly, very briefly, introduces himself because mostly what he wants to talk about and most of what the letter is about is about the message that he will bring, the good news of Jesus Christ and the love of God and the amazing grace of God through Jesus Christ. Paul didn't start the church in Rome. The church in Rome started from other Christians traveling there, taking the message there. But now there was a, a church there, a group of Christians meeting together there, and Paul desires to go and to be with them. And as he sends this preparatory letter, this, this letter to the Romans is one in which he gives the most clearest explanation of the, of the full grace of God, of any of his other writings, as he outlines God's love for us in Jesus Christ. And over the next several months, as we go through the first eight chapters of Romans, we're going to touch on a bunch of different topics and words that are significant and important for us as Christians to, to understand and to grow in our understanding of these topics. Law and gospel, sin and God's judgment, grace, faith, and righteousness, the cross and the resurrection, justification, a life of good works, love and hope. You know, it's no wonder that often a lot of verses that people have memorized that are verses that are important to them and significant to them come from the book of Romans. Because as we go through this, you're going to hear a lot of familiar passages, a lot of passages that are dearly loved by Christians as Paul lays out the amazing grace of God. He begins his letter with grace. Now there are sections in Paul's letter to the Romans that are filled with the wrath of God towards sin. And that's what's going to happen the next couple of weeks as we go through that. But where does Paul start? He starts with grace. Pure grace. That's the message that God has given him to share with others. He begins that this message that has been given to him is not a new message. It's a message that has been passed down throughout the Old Testament, prophet after prophet, speaking of the promises of God and the grace of God to come in the Messiah. And then he talks about who this Messiah is. He is the one who is true man, a descendant of David, and he is the one who is true God by the power of the Holy Spirit. And that this true 
man, true God, gave his life on the cross and rose victoriously from the dead. And because he is the living Savior, he unites together all those who believe in him. The simple truth, the simple beauty of the grace of God in our Lord Jesus Christ. God so loved the world that he sent his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. The next section he moves into is he gives thanks to God for their faith and trust in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. A message that has gotten out to others as other people around the world have heard of the great faith of the Christians in Rome. And so he gives thanks and praise to God for their faith. And then he informs them, and he says, God is my witness that I have been praying for you. His great concern and his great love for them. And not only praying for them, but praying that God would give him the opportunity to come and be with them, that they may share the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ together. And then we come to the main verses of this first section, verses 16 and 17, where Paul says, I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes, first for the Jew, then for the Gentile. For in the gospel of righteousness from God is revealed, a righteousness that is by faith from first to last, just as it is written, the righteous will live by faith. If Paul was alive today and this book was written today, it wouldn't be called Romans. It would be called The Righteous Person Lives by Faith. Because that's what this letter, that's what this book of the Bible is all about. And over the next couple of months, you're going to hear us talking about righteousness a lot, and faith a lot, and grace a lot. Because that's what Paul is emphasizing here. That's what God inspired him to write, that we may know and understand this good news, the gospel. And that good news is the good news of Jesus Christ. And this good news is the power of God for salvation. So it's very important to recognize that what is being said here is not that what Paul is sharing is a historical account of the life of Christ, a historical account of the things that have happened. It's not that he is simply telling them about salvation. But what Paul is saying here is the good news, the gospel itself, actually brings about salvation. Hearing The good news of Jesus Christ does that work of salvation. As he says, it is the power for salvation. The Greek word for power is didymus. And from the word didymus, we get our English word dynamite. It's the power. It's that dynamite, the good news of Jesus Christ, that blast a heart that is cold and full of sin and hardened. And it is God's word, the gospel message of Jesus Christ, that blasts into that to bring life, to bring healing, to bring hope, to bring his grace, to bring his blessings. The power of God at work through the gospel for those who believe for those who put their trust, their confidence in Jesus Christ. Verse 17 is the explanation of why verse 16 is true. As he says, For in the gospel a righteousness from God is revealed. Righteousness is being right with God. We also talk about being just, justified, justification. A good way to understand that is 
just as if I'd never sinned. That it's that righteousness is from God. We can't, we can't pursue righteousness. We can't earn righteousness. We can't get it by anything that we do. Righteousness is God's righteousness that's revealed to us and it's given to us because of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ and His doing everything that was necessary for us through the cross and through the empty tomb. And it's all a gift. And it's given to us because of God's love for us. And in this righteousness, we receive it by faith. And faith is also a gift of God because by nature, we are spiritually blind, dead, and enemies of God, and we can do absolutely nothing And that's why we need the dynamite of the gospel, the power of the good news that breaks into our hearts and brings to us the righteousness of Christ. That we are right with God because of what Christ has done. Over the next several months, as we go through these eight chapters, what Paul is going to outline in these chapters, he's going to outline the fact that we are hopeless when it comes to righteousness. We have none on our own because of sin. But about the righteousness of Jesus Christ, about the amazing grace of our God and His love for us. And He's going to outline all of that for us as we go through this this text. Paul longed to go to Rome in order to see the Christians there. And he prayed to God for it. And it did happen, but not as he thought. Because he went to Rome as a prisoner in chains. And as a prisoner in chains because of the gospel that he was not ashamed of. The gospel that he believed in, the good news of Jesus Christ, the power for salvation. And while he was in Rome, he had the opportunity to be with the Christians in Rome and to live and share the gospel message with them. Over the next months, may our longing grow, our longing to hear of God's amazing grace, our longing to grow in the understanding of law and gospel, sin and God's judgment and grace our longing to grow in the understanding of the cross and the resurrection, justification, a life living of good works, giving thanks and praise to God for all that He has done, and a longing to grow in love and hope, which is only possible because of what God has done and what He reveals to us that the righteous person lives by faith. Amen. May the peace of God which passes all understanding keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.